Does your controller have stick drift? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you an easy way to repair the stick drift on your controllers. This is a universal method that works for PlayStation, Xbox, and even the Switch Pro. It's a cheap alternative to repairing an annoying problem that most game heads face. Because let's be honest, some of these controllers are still selling for around $70 brand new. So finding a cheaper solution to a rather common problem is still better than buying a new controller. So the first thing we'll do is plug it in and test it out. And right away you can see the left analog stick is drifting to the left. So let's go ahead and get it fixed. The first step when taking apart these controllers is to remove the back cover. This PS5 DualSense has four screws holding the housing together. Two under the L1 and R1 buttons and two more under the faceplate trim. Once the trim pops off, you can pop off the L1 and R1 buttons exposing those screws. There's also a few clips to unhinge at the bottom. Once all the screws are exposed, we'll remove them and separate the covers. And once that's removed, the back cover just pops right off. Now time for the fun part. Instead of replacing the analog stick with the brand new one, we're just going to add this little handle rocker. The way it works is you solder it over the joystick pins and correct the drift by twisting the adjusters left or right. Taking a look at the joystick, we can see two covers. Under each one of these foam covers is a potentiometer. There's two for each joystick. One that senses left and right movement and the other up and down. In order for potentiometer to work, they have to measure movement from a consistent neutral point, which this controller doesn't have. And after a lot of gameplay, the self-centering system can become stretched over time, making the potentiometers think you're moving the stick even when you're not. Another great feature about using this handle rocker is we don't have to remove the motherboard, saving us a lot more time and is universal for most console controllers. So let's go ahead and solder this on. We have to be careful and make sure we don't get in the way of these cables though. So we're going to align it onto the pins and add some flux. And then we'll go ahead and add some solder to each pin. These things come in handy, especially when you're on a budget. It's really simple to use and super cheap. I picked these up for about $5 each. It's a much better alternative than buying a new controller. And I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description on where you can find these handle rockers. We're going to add solder to each contact point. Right now I'm soldering the potentiometer pins. And once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and solder on the legs. And another advantage of adding this handle rocker is you could always go back and recorrect the drift if it happens again. But why do you think joysticks are so fragile? If you're spending $500 on console, don't you think you should get a more durable controller? Now that all the contact points are soldered, we'll grab our plastic screwdriver and slowly turn it back into place. Using the gamepad tested website, we can see that the drift is now gone. It's that simple. Now that it's realigned, we'll go ahead and reinstall the battery and close it back up. We'll throw the shell back on there. And don't forget the two screws at the top and bottom. Finally, we can reinstall the faceplate, as well as the L1 and R1 buttons. And now it's ready to play. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe and let me know what you think about this repair method.